Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how to use GIMP in 2025. Now it will be a GIMP beginner's tutorial since I'll mostly cover the basics and in the process I'll also show you how to make a thumbnail in GIMP. Now if at some point in the video you need to pause it or go back, don't hesitate to do so in case needed. But first guys, if you want, you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr and here you can get a YouTube logo and banner or a modern minimalist YouTube logo and banner for your YouTube channel. But now back to the video. Now my previous video I actually show you how to download and install GIMP. So in case you're running into any troubles, if you're actually just wondering how to get GIMP, make sure to check out that video, it's actually up here in the right corner, or down in the description below. And so once again, you can check it out if you feel you need to. But we are just going to jump right in here. Now of course, GIMP is known as being a good free alternative to Photoshop, since there are also a lot of similar features. And upon opening it, so if you just download and installed it, you actually see this window right here, it's a welcome window. And you can also immediately personalize, so like do a color scheme here. The icon theme, you can actually put this at legacy, and if you see it just changed, it'll put the icons of the tools like it used to be, the older versions of GIMP, how it used to look, and if you prefer that way actually. Otherwise, if you do default, it's going to be of course the more minimalistic modern tool icons right here. Now, if you actually select this, you can go ahead and play around with the size, as you can see, of the tools, the font scaling as well. So that actually is going to be the font scaling of the words in GIMP itself. So nothing to do with any projects, this is going to be the font of these words, for example. So it's going to make it bigger or smaller if you do this. This is generally just going to be the UI of GIMP before opening any projects. But of course, you don't want that. You can just uncheck this. System language is going to be the language you want GIMP to be in. By default, it's on English. But you can choose another one, of course. You can also go to contribute and actually report any bugs as well if needed. In release notes, you see the latest, which by the way, at the time of this recording is GIMP 3.0.6. I'm gonna see some new features, some bugs that might have been fixed. And here in create, of course, you can go ahead and open already existing one or create a new one. But I'm just gonna do close here. It's actually optional to use that window, but it is one you'll probably get when opening this newer version of GIMP. But I'm just going to do the standard way by going to file and new here. Of course, it's going to create a new project. So you can choose among templates if you want a specific ratio to use it for something specific. For example, you can use it for phones. Also, if you just need an A4 format, for example, anything from like flyers, banners, now, all types of pixel sizes here to specific template that you might need. But in my case, if I'm going to use it for a YouTube thumbnail, it will be 920 by 1080. Now you can put this resolution down by, for example, 1280 by 720, which is like a lower resolution. But really nowadays, the standard really would be 920 by 1080 and you should be more than fine by using that image size really now then if you can go to advanced options here resolution you can put it at 72 it might be at 72 by default around there but you can bring it up to like 300 that is that should be fine rgb color i always advise you to use rgb and here are some extra little features here you can do the background color you can also make it transparent so that's actually not going to be a background it's just going to be immediately transparent but i'm just going to keep this on background color and then here you can click okay now as you can see immediately i start with a white background i actually want to make this rather red so i can go to the bucket fill here the bucket fill tool you can do a gray Gradient as well, so that's going to be two or more colors. I'm just going to go with a basic bucket fill, click on the screen, and it's going to make it this red right here, which is good for me at the moment. And I can just go back to my move tool here, which, as you might have guessed, just moves anything you really click upon. Now something else I wanted to mention here, if you go to edit and go to preferences, now you might have guessed it, there's mostly UI preferences, but one in particular that some people might have questions about is if you go to toolbox here and you can select use tool groups. Now if you unselect this, as you can see, they will all be individual tools. So you won't have to right click and see multiple options for one tool. They all be individually placed like this. Now that's something you might want or you don't want. You can then simply go down here and go back to the little window here and just use two groups again, which is something I definitely prefer in this case. Once again, it's a preference. This is the preference tab so if there's anything other ui related that you want to change here it's going to be some small changes here and there it's up to you but this is definitely something i wanted to mention in the first instance whatever you've done or you reset it or you click ok and now in preparation of whatever we're going to create this is going to make our work way easier we're going to go to view show grid as you can see this grid will show now there are way too many this is way too big there's going to be way too many grids here we don't want that so i'm actually going to go to image and configure grid and here I'm going to select 120 and as you can see that's all we need to do here we can click OK this is already better this is basically going to help us place the objects easier now if you actually wanted to snap to these grids so that we can place it more accurately we we'll go back to view I'm going to select snap to grid so now whenever I have an image it will actually snap to those lines here if needed okay we're almost done here just want to go to image and select guides I'm going to do new guide by percent so it's going to be horizontal and 50 here you just want to click OK. You can see it create this horizontal line here going through the middle. Then if you go back to image again, guides and new guide by percent. This time I'm going to do vertical and keep this on 50 as well and click OK. And as you can see, now we know where the middle is. This is actually going to make the work way easier for us because we can actually place right here, snap to grid. We know where the middle is. Just by doing these small 
preparations to make the work that we're actually going to do way easier. And if you want to, by the way, save this by default as a layout, so that every time you open a thumbnail or do anything else, you have this as a layout. You can go ahead and save this already, of course, and do save as here. You can, of course, save this like, you can go ahead up here and call this default layout or just layout and just save it right here. And so the next time you only have to open this project file, that's all you have to do. But I will also go, of course, in depth towards the end of the video on how to actually save projects and also as an image, for example, a GPG image. For now, of course, we're going to import our first image, which there will be two ways to do that. The default way will be to go to File and open as Layers. And so in a search where your image is, now, of course, here on the left, if, for example, it's going to be in Pictures, you go to Pictures. Otherwise, you might go to another folder. Just wherever you have saved that image in question. You can also see the path up here in case. What you can actually do then is either double click on this image or you click on Open. And so the second way to import an image in GIMP is if you go to, for example, your File Explorer here and actually take the image in question you want and just simply drag it on here. And as you can see, it will import as well. So those are just two ways to do it. It's up to you what you want to do. Now, of course, this image, first of all, is way too big. We don't want it to be that big. So we can actually go ahead and do then is go to the scale tool click on it and you can right click on it i have all these options so first of all we're going to do scale scale is just simply as you can see change the scale of the image now also make sure that this right here is selected this little chain here if i unselect that it can become any form you want and you don't want that because it's not going to be accurate you want it to keep its ratio so what you basically do is make sure that at all times this right here is selected and make sure that these are the same values and there you go you can just change it like this so it will remain it will change in size but it will be the same ratio and it will be deformed in any way you can for example make it this big now if you want to place it you can take it in the middle here and just drag it wherever you want it to be as you can see what's nice it actually snaps to grids as you see if i do this as we saw earlier so i can simply put it in the middle here a bit above there you go they can just readjust it or click scale to actually keep the size and so if i right click back up here of course we also have rotate or swift r which kind of speaks for itself of course you can reset it shear is just going to take a bit of the top or a bit of the sides once again here are the key binds by the way if you do, for example shift plus h or shift plus f flip here as you can see they go even perspective and a 3d transform this makes it more 3d the other one is more of a perspective they're a bit different of course but that's what you can do with all these tools here and there's a big variety of things you can do to actually change the image in question if you want to maybe zoom in a little bit there's multiple ways to do it you can of course use the zoom tool you can just use z as well as you can see you can just click anywhere and we'll zoom in or you go down here and as you can see there's a percentage here that you can change for example i do 70 it's zoomed in a bit but of course that's manual and it goes a bit slower than if you just use z and select it yourself i'm just going to keep this at like 67 right here this just zooms the whole project not a specific image just the whole project now, as you might have noticed, I'll put this a little bit up here, that our image, of course, has a white background. So it's not PNG, so it's not transparent. It actually has a white background. Now, we don't want that. And there's actually going to be multiple ways. The first being the lasso tool here. So the free select tool. Right click, you have to free select. Now, if I do that, as you can see, it's going to start making points where I actually want them to be placed. And then at the end, you have to connect the dots and to create a selection, of course. Now, if you want to deselect, you can actually go up here to the select. I do to select bar, you can do none. You can also do invert. So it's going to be the exact opposite. So everything will be selected except for this area and then some more detailed options right here but you can also of course do shift ctrl a to deselect as a key bind but you're just going to do it like this and then you also have the fuzzy select tool which will be the magic wand in photoshop as an equivalent you right click and of course make sure it's on fuzzy select and you can actually select the image wherever you want and it's automatically going to choose the area now sometimes it might of course forget places like for example the nose here or if it only does the nose what you want to do is hold swift on your keyboard and you click right here so you can actually select both at the same time and so now we'll be easily able for example cut out the logo here that's definitely a fast way to do it now it might not be perfect sometimes there might be some white here on the edges right here from the background now in case if you want to avoid that and as you can see it didn't also take the paintbrush here but if you want to avoid that you can go back to select and actually do shrink now this is already a bit more advanced but basically what you do you do for example by one or two pixels you click ok and it will actually shrink here and take off like one or two pixels on the edges which will avoid to have for example pieces of the white background so that could help so you can just go ahead and deselect this again or swift ctrl a so definitely multiple ways to do it if you use for example the select tool and just do one dot by dot as we saw earlier that i think is going to be the best way but we right here i'm just going to select make sure this layer is selected by the way your layers are going to be right here and just right click here and do delete layers that will delete the layer in question you can of course also add a layer down here if you do create you can actually do some settings here for example the color also the width and height and you can click ok as you can see that will add a new layer and then once again you can also just delete it like that but we are actually gonna import the transparent version of the logo so if i do open as layers once again and i go to this one you can already see it this is how it looks when you have a transparent image so i'm just gonna double click here and of course we're gonna go back to the scale here tool because it's a bit too big so i'm gonna make this a bit smaller i want to probably place this in the middle right here don't want to make this too big from time to time i can also advise you to go down here and look how it looks from a distance because not everybody's gonna see this on like a desktop it might also be seen on a 
my phone. So it's nice to see how it looks in a smaller format. So I would say this is maybe a bit too big. I'm gonna make it too small, but definitely not too big either. And there we go. Let's keep it like that. As I said, I want it to be in the middle, like on the line. And I can click scale again. And there's gonna be our image. Now if I actually want to change this image, I can go up to filters. And here you're gonna have a variety of effects. You can, for example, blur the image. Now that by default will be a Gaussian blur if you want the blur that's gonna be by default. And some other more specific options here. Now I'm actually gonna do light and shadow and go down to drop shadow. So I'm gonna give this image a drop shadow. Now here, as you can see, it already start appearing. This is the drop shadow. Now if I do this, it's gonna be placement. So it went up here. And if I do this, it's gonna be underneath. It's basically where it is gonna be situated. So let's say I want it around here, that was fine. Then the radius of the blur. The more you blur it, the larger it's gonna be. Because if I don't blur it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be basically a straight line. But if I start to blur it, it's gonna be more of a glow. And that's what we want. So I'm gonna keep it around here. Grow radius, here you can play with the size a bit. So I'm gonna actually make this slightly bigger, not too much. It's actually already a decent drop shadow that he has here. And the opacity, you can see it wasn't at 100, but at 100 it starts to get pretty dark. So you can also just put it down and change the opacity. It's gonna make it look better in some cases. If the opacity is down a bit, so let's just do around here and can click OK. You can see it has a nice little drop shadow. You can also from time to time, if you want to see how the image looks, Go back to view and do show guides, unselect show grid. And lastly, also unselect show layer boundary. And as you can see, then we can actually see how the image is going to look. And of course, then just select these again. If you want to go back to the grid, that is going to help us. Now we're going to go up to the colors tab here. We have some options like the use saturation, some exposure, and also brightness and contrast, which is a pretty default one. Now same here, you can actually go down here. It's going to make it less bright. It's going to make it brighter. Now in this case, we don't really need it. Maybe just do one here, why not? Now contrast, same. It's going to make it a bit darker here. If you put this up, it's going to be more focused on the darker parts of the image. And of course, do the opposite. It's going to be less. And this image doesn't really need really any brightness and contrast. But of course, know that that is an option you can use. Now then we want to make sure that the background is selected here. So the background layer. And we go back to filters. Once again to light a shadow, I'm going to add a vignette. Why not? Now, of course, this is way too much. You can change the color here as well. Now, since it's already red, I might just keep it at this, but I will zoom it out a bit. As you can see, it's going to only do the corners, which can look nice. But I don't do it too much here. Of course, the softness. You can also see how soft or harsh you want it to be. And same, of course, this is going to be the placement, so X and the Y. But here it's going to be in the middle, which is what we want. So that's going to click OK. As you can see, just added some things in the in the corners here. It's, an, it's a nice little bonus. Could look nice. Now, if you made any mistakes, you can actually do Ctrl Z. Or if you go to Edit here, as you can see, just click it. So it's going to undo it. You can also redo it if you do Ctrl and Y. So if you go one step forward. Of course, you have your basic shortcuts like Cut, which is going to be Ctrl X, Ctrl C, and of course, Ctrl V to copy and paste. These are also, of course, definitely very important keyboard shortcuts shortcuts in case you didn't know them so you can go to edit to see basic editing shortcuts of course clear is going to be delete you can often just click delete on your keyboard but what we are going to add of course something that we have been missing which is going to be the text tool so there you go you want to just select it right here click on the screen now do change the color here because otherwise i'm not going to see it on a red background in my case i'm going to make this white and i can start typing so let's first of course do GIMP. I'm going to do it in all caps in this case. Now, as you can see, I don't really like this font. So you can go up here and actually change the font. Now, if you already have one in mind, you can also type it if you want. So I'm going to go for this one right here. Actually, I'm going to make these small letters. That's going to look better. And of course, you want to increase the size. You do that here. Do make sure you make this bigger as well. So you can make it with a scroll or you can type and select a size that you want yourself. So I might actually do around 160. There we go. I'm going to use a selection tool. Just going to place this. Once again in the middle, fortunately, we have this grid because I know now that this right here is going to be the middle and it will also snap to it. Now, actually, I'm going to put this a little bit higher because I want to put beginner's tutorial underneath as well. So if I take the logo here, so just make sure that in layers you select it. Then you also want to hold Swift okay, and you just select GIMP, in this case, the text as well. There used to be an option that you have a little chain here and that you can select both images and you could move them together. But that has since changed. So if you have GIMP free or over, this is going to be different. And so you want to select first of all. So, of course, I'm going to do the text here and the GIMP logo. So hold swift and you select both and then up here and make sure of course the selection tool is selected as well you want to do move the selected layers so you click on that one and then as you can see you can move them together so it's very important that's actually been a change that has been done and if you can use the arrows as well here as you can see if i use the arrows they are actually moving upwards as well so let's maybe say around here i might change it a little bit later so i'm going to place this above here actually even though they don't overlay each other I'm actually going to add a new text here, which is going to be the last text, which is just going to say beginners, make this bigger, tutorial, there you go. And just like before, we are going to make this a bit bigger and change the font as well. You can also do that up here, by the way, if the font, if you're struggling, you can actually select a different one. This is going to be a more standard one, I think, that I'm going to choose. There you go, let's go with this one. I like this one. So I'll have to make it a bit, bit bigger. I'm going to move this a bit more towards here. 
Okay, there we go. And we can go to the selection tool. I'm going to place this in the middle. Once again, you can use the arrows as well. I'm going to move all of these a bit up here. And I'll add a new layer down here. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go over the brush tool. You can also do pencil or an airbrush, but I'm just going to do a paintbrush. And here you have to select the color. I'm going to make it a bit brighter here. You can select different things, select different hardnesses, whatever you want. I'm just going to do this. And you can also do the size, for example. Then, of course, you can do something like that, for example. And also move it around if you go back to the select tool and do the arrows. Okay, so then I'll say we're done. Now, what I can do then is actually remove this to see how it looks. And there we go. And actually do the last little changes. And there we go. And actually can go ahead and move these with the arrow just to make sure that they're like in the middle as well like this so there you go nothing crazy but it was really mostly to show you guys how to actually use the tools and give you an idea on how to actually use them to create in gimp now of course last but definitely not least we need to save the file so for that you want to go to file save as and here up here you can also give it a name like i'm gonna say for example gimp thumbnail and click save if you know where you wanted to save it so that's the project file very important to distinguish that was just the project file and just do make sure also where you saved it in case you want to find it back and then if you once again go to file and do export as once again you want to make sure where you save it as you can see it's also remembered and it's called gimp thumbnail now as you can see here it's png which you can actually change that if you click on select file type by extension and here you can actually go ahead and select another one for example gpg image which is a very standard one and so if you go down you also have the png option of course which is for transparent images but it's also of course for regular images and that has a high resolution png could actually sometimes be better in cases but i'm going to keep it at the gpg image here and if i know where i want it to be saved the image this time not the project file but the image you can click export now this export window will show up i'm going to do quality 100 of course on the best quality sometimes you might have to bring this down because the file size might be big but in most cases i'm sure you can just put this quite high to just 100 you can leave this as well there's going to be more specific options here and in the future if you have made some little changes you can also do save settings so it will remember these settings every time you export but i'm just going to do export here and after that if you save both you can of course close gimp and if i then go to the file where i actually saved it as you can see here we have the project file and here we have the actual gpg image so if i click on it as you can see here it is and make it bigger a good quality as well as a gpg once again as you can see up here as well and here we can see the resolution in any case guys hope you enjoyed this tutorial really try to cover the basics not go too much in detail it really should be a beginner's tutorial showing you the essentials if you have any questions leave them down below please if you like it really nice subscribe to also be really nice and i hope to see you guys in my next video bye